So as I mentioned in the short that I did, I managed to upload an HDR to YouTube, I was rather proud of that. I was yesterday over in Wales and took some images, some video clips of a waterfall which was very beautiful, name in the description below. Now when I got them home, as always happens, I looked at the clips and thought, that looks completely awful, uh, I feel like I've wasted a day. But it's never really like that, because if you're filming in 10 bit, in F-Log, you've got an enormous amount of post-processing room. So I thought it would be interesting to do a before and after, and all the steps using before and after, of how I post-processed a 23-ish second clip from that trip, whoa, nearly fell over, to Wales. So let's jump straight into that. Let's start by looking at the finished version of which he is so proud. So for each of these clips, I'm going to put before on the left and after on the right for each step. So let's have a look at what happens if we compare the final output I did, which of course depends on taste, compared to what happens if I just naively import into an HDR pipeline using the LUTs that uh, Fuji give us. He is being confusing. I will show you the entire video with the Fuji LUT. We will see a side by side later. Why he does not let me do the entire video, I don't know. Now we can see that that represents a tremendous challenge because the HDR pipeline is expecting BT2020 colors and Fuji's moving the BT709 colours, so everything looks wrong, colours are far too saturated and shifted from where they should be. And also we can see the problem that it hasn't corrected for F-Log's gamma curve being different from SMPTE2084, so it's all soot and whitewash, soot and whitewash as my father would have called it. And then the third problem is the scene in general. It starts off with a lot of very bright light, let's be honest, got the sun shining down, but there's still some detail in the shadow we want to see of the rock face. By the time you get to the end of the scene, that bright light's gone altogether, and we've gone from a very saturated colour palette to quite a desaturated colour palette. So any post-processing to be done is pretty much impossible to get right for both of them. And I highly would not recommend doing something like using an automatic normalisation filter, because that's just going to make it look pants. So let's see what we can do about that. You've got to see this. The countryside around here is looking just fabulous today. It's a nice warm day, not hot, by English standards. Uh, both ways and all the countryside slowly coming to life as spring comes along. I hope this pan comes out okay as I've turned off digital stabilization but hey ho I've still got lens and body. Gonna get the sun in a second. So the first step is to use the right LUT which is on my GitHub which uh, takes, uh, compensates for the curve difference between F-Log and SMPTE 2084PQ but doesn't do any colour shifts or anything like that and using that we get the following video where we can see the grading issues but at least all the colour and everything is correct. So the next step is to, to actually take two copies of the video, one for the end section, or the, the towards the end shall we say, which I'm going to grade differently to the one towards the start. 
Now the one towards the start, we're going to apply some curves to it to boost everything but the very great highlights and everything but the deep shadows. So we bring up the cliff face, etc. Now that's going to have a problem. I'm going to put the, the values I used for the curves below. It's going to have a problem that it's going to crush out the contrast on the cliff face, which can make it look quite artificial. So the, there is a solution to that, which we'll go into next. Okay, so now we've fixed the brightness reasonably well on the cliff face, and it's looking a bit better, but the localised contrast on this cliff face makes it look very flat, but we can compensate for that. There's a technique called unsharp mask, which is normally considered just for sharpening things. But if you increase the radius of the unsharp, the blur part of it, what it becomes is a local contrast increasing system. So what we can do, again, details of the settings below, is to very significantly blur the background do an un with an unsharp mask. So we take that blurred background away from the main, the main image and that increases the localised contrast which tricks your eye into thinking there's more absolute contrast than there is. The problem with this technique is it's a matter of taste. It, it does have an effect which makes the trees and the sky at the top not look quite right. And if you add more of it, it looks more and more extreme until it looks like a 1980s a video, video cassette recording. Uh, I've added just a little bit and I think it tidies things up. If you're not keen, it doesn't matter. It's all down to taste. So if you're wondering at all what I'm up to, I'm currently walking through Foxholes Nature Reserve and I'm trying to stay off the beaten path so I don't bump into people and get embarrassed while I'm trying to vlog. It's all a bit new to me. So then what we can do is move on to looking at processing the second half because what we're going to do is to take the first half, process it all the way through like that so it will look pants at the end we're going to take the same thing, I call it the second half, but it's actually the whole video. We're going to process that in a different way all the way through to the end, which will look better for the ending. And then we can just crossfade from one to the other, so there's no sharp transition, so we'll just smoothly change from one post-processing grading to another. So the first step on the second or the second half, shall we say, is to just ignore the highlights. They're not important anymore because they've kind of gone away and boost everything up. So we just have a nice, nice smooth curve moving up, just boosting the brightness of everything. So let's have a look at that. I really like about this X-T4 is the tally light so I know when I'm recording because otherwise I get out of phase and I'm talking away and the camera's turned off and that's not so good and then I record myself falling over which is also not good. Anyhow I digress. So what we need to do well if we have a look at that previous video uh, clip we can see that the highlights of the sky etc are just completely blown out and crushed. It doesn't matter because we're not going to use those but the lower end looks a lot better. Two things I don't like about it. One is it looks desaturated. So I have a script which I wrote which cur curves the colour gamma. I don't really know how to describe that well. It's not a normal curves thing, but it kind of boosts saturation in a in a slightly more natural way than just boosting saturation. I'm sure there's a million plugins for every editor out there. I, I, it's part of a script I wrote called Brighton. So let's have a look what that does. Grading even this 23 second piece of video takes looking at it a huge number of times. If you are thinking wow, I've seen this clip so many times now imagine what it is like for me having to play it back to him during the grading and editing process. Gosh, this camera gets heavy after a while. 
So now, after I've boosted the colours a little bit, well, kind of changed their gamma so they look a little bit nicer at the end of the script, the final thing is that I want that the waterfall to absolutely pop. Now, the Fuji's lovely in that it doesn't, to my... Uh, what I'm looking at, I keep looking that way, not fall over. It doesn't appear in any way to sharpen the video as it records it. So it's up to you to do some sharpening if you want. Now, to make the droplets of water really pop, I've added some unsharp mask. I know some people really like uh, un uh, not sharped uh, video. They like it ro uh, completely unsharpened, and that's completely fine. It's to taste. So I'll show you side by side the effect of the unsharp mask. And now finally, although I'm bound to have forgotten some things, so I'll have to go through and add those in post, no doubt, we want to crossfade from one to the other. Now this isn't exactly trivial because most crossfade filters and everything will just completely screw up are in HDR. But again, on my GitHub there's a script that crossfades two script, um, two clips uh, using uh, a custom blend filter that comes with FFmpeg and a little bit of maths. And that makes a completely seamless blend from the colour setup, the grading setup in the what I call the first half, and the grading setup in the second half. To my eyes, you can barely notice anything's going on. So this allows me to take a video with the uh, exposure, you know, the frame rate, everything locked off, and then post-process it to make it look just the way I want using F-Log as the recording medium rather than having to rely on setting everything auto on the camera which will not have the uh, aesthetic effect that I want for trying really hard but of course is what I'm doing now. So I hope you found this interesting. I just saw a hare running off. The countryside's amazing and I'll catch you next time. Please do not hit like or subscribe, if you do he might make more videos, no one wants that to happen do they?